it's winning and it feels better because the other person feels bad. Which essentially is what a lot of sport is. Video games these days are too hard, they should be easier. Or should they? We're going to be talking about all that and more, especially what I've been buying recently on the Nintendo Switch, but first, coffee. Alright, the water is boiling, but actually I don't have any special single origin beans today. I'm going back to one of these plastic baggies just because I just ran out of time, just been really busy with work, busy with stuff. I don't like to wait until I've got special coffees when I make these videos. I like to just do them when I've got all the thoughts right there at the tip of my mind. What we're talking about today came on because I bought Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection on the Nintendo Switch. I also bought Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. So we've got a couple new fighters and apparently there's a rumor that Dragon Ball Fighters may also be coming too. Nintendo Switch quite soon, but these video games have been feeling a lot of pressure to be dumbed down and become easier so that more people can get into them and enjoy them. But the problem is every time these games get easier, the people who are really good at the original versions, like the hard versions, they don't find it as satisfying to play. So if you've got these like professional players kind of walking away from the game and then the casuals are coming in, but then they're not staying with the game, then the game is essentially just going to die out. But what actually brought on this discussion was a video that I was watching on YouTube by a chap called James Chen, who is one of the best known voices and faces in all of like fighting game history. And he raised a really interesting point about how we can actually make fighting games fun. Because for people like me who play a lot of fighting games, like maybe with my brother, it's kind of like, even if you lose, like we still live in the same house, we have to keep playing with each other. But with friends, it's just like, once you start losing, it's just like, I'm not gonna show up at your house anymore just because I'm so tired of coming over and just getting beaten by you because you practice the game all day and ain't nobody got time for that. But one of the most important points that he brought up was that fighting games have always been quite difficult. They started off really, really difficult, and then they became a little bit more playable, but they never actually got kind of easy, and every time they did get easy, the fighting game community didn't really latch onto it. Whereas, there was a game that was designed to be fun. And that game is super smack. They would sometimes put in these features, like random elements, like tripping over, things that happen randomly so that it's not always the same people who win over and over again. So it was kind of like this element of randomness. There's other videos that go into much more detail about this, but essentially you've got sort of a sliding scale. You've got games being difficult and it's very rewarding to win, and games being completely random and it doesn't really matter who wins, and you kind of want to find some sort of balance in the middle. Because if the game is all the way over here, then only the people who are really, really good are ever going to win, and that's always going to be a much smaller number than we need for the people to pay off the development cost of these games. And so what James Chen brings up in this video, which I found really, really fascinating, and I really highly recommend that you go and watch it. In fact, I'm gonna put a link in the description so that you can all go and watch James, Chen, James Chen's video. It's really, really interesting. With Smash Brothers, they actually came from a point where, okay, it's fun for everyone, and yeah, it's got some random elements, and sometimes you lose even though you were doing really, really well. But then it also had this extra mode. And I'm actually gonna look it up because I don't know nothing about it. For glory. Wiki. Alright, so I'm not a competitive Smash player, so I'm not super familiar with it, but it sounds like For Glory is like the competitive mode when you want to like remove a lot of extra factors that kind of detract from whether the most the best player won or not. And I gather that's kind of what usually happens in competition and in sport. You want to know who the best player was, not who got lucky this time. Uh, the water's done, so I'm just going to go and grab the coffee stuff. Alright, so I've still got my thermostat controlled kettle, but also this time it's just all I mean, the only tool you really need for this coffee is your cup and the thing, because this is actually a bag, and if you haven't seen the previous episode, you just pull this off and you've got this little baggy like so, and you actually just rip this off like that, and you've got coffee on the inside like so. So I'll point the camera down. Now, the reason that I found James Chen's video incredibly interesting is that he came up with this amazing solution and it's that video games that even when they're difficult, all they need is casual modes. So instead of what has actually been happening recently with fighting games, which is making games that were difficult and complicated, simplifying them so that the execution is a little easier, you don't have to press the buttons quite so fast or as on time as before, you can actually win in a lot of these games by focusing more on other strategies, where a lot of 
older players feel that the actual difficulty is actually part of the fun. And whether or not that's the only way to have fun isn't really the point. James Chen's v idea is that you can actually introduce casual modes so that it's actually not the main game that changes, but within the game, there are other things that you can do to have fun, so that the person who's always losing doesn't get really pissed off. When I heard that, I thought that is such a genius idea, and I instantly thought that a game like Super Puzzle Fighter, which has always been marketed as a separate game, like a separate puzzle game with Street Fighter characters, it could well just be a bonus game in Street Fighter. Just another thing that you can do with the same characters, and remember, we're not talking about functions, they're not just functions. They have faces, they have voices, they have backstories, they are characters, and in our minds, they're as real as, as any other real person, I guess. And so I gave it some real thought, and I thought back to the old days when I would play against my brother, and we would play like 20 matches in a row, you know, Akuma versus Akuma, and we know that I'm clearly the worst player because he won against me literally 20 times in a row. My brother was really good at Street Fighter. and. That sort of thing can very be very stressful for a sibling that always loses. And unfortunately, I, I was the kind of person that lost so often that it made me want to get better. But for the most part, not everyone is going to is going to react that way, and they shouldn't really be expected to. And so I really like the idea that games could just have more aspects to them. And I don't mean you have to have like a bowling mode, but one of the examples that James uses is like they could have this sort of final fight mode where you could be in like a side-scrolling game and you could be co-op street fighter. You could be fighting against AI enemies that come towards you. I guess maybe part of like dramatic battle, I suppose that's also a part of being able to team up with someone, play street fighter for the same cause. It's not always you're losing to another human being. You could be losing to computer players, which is what co-op modes was that's what was really fun about co-op modes when that was still a big part of multiplayer gaming. Now actually there's a really important part of all this and it's what do I, why does it matter so much to me? And it's because I actually play these Street Fighter, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, King of Fighters type games because I actually enjoy that they're difficult. Now if you remember I made a video and I was holding my Switch, it was kind of like a thumbnail that, that looked like this, right? But it was a picture of me holding Street Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Nintendo Switch. And I was talking about how it actually got me back into gaming. It was something that I could strive for, something with a very clear goal that I knew that I could get good at or become proficient at winning at. It was a clear goal that I could visualize. And it wasn't about just winning, it was about wanting to know how to do something and then being able to pull it off. And so execution, for me, actually was most of the fun of this game. And every time they release a game where they reduce the importance of execution, I'm not gonna say that I dislike those games. In fact, Blaze Blue came out and the execution really is a lot simpler in that game compared to a lot of Blaze, other Blaze Blue and other Guilty Gear type games. But I still think it's a lot of fun. It's just that I don't want that to be the only kind of fighting game out there. I really enjoy that there are the fight, these fighting games that require a huge amount of execution. It's just a type of game. I don't want all the games to end up in one sort of mode. I think that's, that would be a, a bit of a shame to lose out on that variety. Forgot to drink the coffee. <sighs> it's a very at home, it's a flavor you know well. It's like, it's like a chain cafe. It tastes like a chain cafe. And so it's a really difficult one because where you have games like Smash, where the director actually wants it to just be fun for everyone, he's gonna put as many random elements in it so that it's always level playing ground so it doesn't become boring. And then you've got the other side where it's like, it's actually quite boring and it sucks to lose because the main problem is people go online and they lose and no matter how many times you get better, you always rank up and you end up playing people who are better than you. And so probably about 50 to 60% of the time, you're gonna be losing, but about you know 30 to 40% of the time, you're gonna be hopefully winning if you're actually improving at the game. What that leaves you with is this majority situation where most people experience, I don't wanna say loss, but just losing. <laughs> and it's not a fun feeling. And although the point of the game was, you know, competition, does it always have to lead to bad feeling all the time? Because it is a bad feeling. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have people play these fighting games and lose, but not feel all the 
Ugh. Now let's set aside the fact that the pain of losing is actually part of the fun. It, it, it motivates certain types of people to become better, but on for the most part, losing just kind of sucks. We would prefer to just win. But with like mobile games and they're constantly just like, ta-da, you got an achievement just for turning the game on. Like we start to realize like oh, we're being cheated of the joy of winning. We're not actually winning, we've been cheated. And when we feel like we've been cheated out of it, it, it just feels even worse than just having lost. It would have just been more fun to just lose. It's just that game makers don't want to take that risk. And why should they? It's, like, it's money, it costs money, you have to pay people to make these games. You want to take as few risks as possible, right? What James Chen came up with is such a genius idea that I don't understand why they don't pay him loads of money to just be the director and creator of new Street Fighter games, because he clearly knows what works. He, he, he must talk to every single person who actually Actually goes to these tournaments and plays and understands the game really really well but we haven't seen it tested yet so we've seen Smash Brothers and they created like the four glory mode so there's like the place for people who want to compete but then the rest of the game can be this like safe zone where we just have fun. But with Street Fighter it went the opposite way, right? So they had Street Fighter 4 and they're like, but we don't have a game that we can really, really push in the esports arena. So they created SF5 from the ground up to work with esports. And so it didn't even have an arcade mode. It was like, go in, there's training mode and survival. All you need to do is just practice and get good, right? It was just like, but now people are just going to experience going straight online and losing and they're going to turn the game off and that's what actually happened, you know? People were like, there's no arcade mode, I can't have fun on an easy difficulty setting, so I have to go online and just lose and it just feels bad, just tons of bad feeling. If we could get rid of that bad feeling and allow people to still be in the game, but experience winning and experience having fun, experience parts of the game that don't actually involve winning or losing. Because the main thing that I think Street Fighter created was the fact that you've got a couple characters and one person beats another human being. Which is extremely powerful, but also feels really bad. So if I have any real thoughts about it, it's that I would love to see more fighting game creators add in fun elements to the game that do not actually change the competitive nature of the main game. It's like a sacrifice that clearly doesn't need to be made. For example, going to too far would be to have a one button fireball, right? You just press one button and fireballs just come out. And with Street Fighter, because fireballs and jumping and walking forwards are like the main points of the game, if it's really that easy to press fireballs, then it just becomes like a spamming match. It act that would also ruin the game. So they found this like middle ground in the middle where you can like buffer all the buttons and it's much easier to do really epic combos, but then it's actually less impressive when people do these impressive combos. Like they were impressive when execution mattered, but now that execution doesn't matter, it's not that impressive anymore. So if there was any way for a publisher like Capcom to take Street Fighter and think about it a little more freely. Now, I know they had the sort of augmented reality Hadouken experience, but it wasn't two player. You want to be there with your friends and you just want your friend to not lose. How can we play Street Fighter together without my friend experiencing loss? <laughs> James's genius idea was just to have them play Final Fight, so they're in a side-scrolling Double Dragon style game and you just beat up AI characters. And maybe the person who knocks down the most AI characters gets a higher score, but the other person just gets a lower score. They don't lose, they had fun, they still experienced the thrill of knocking down the AI opponents, but it doesn't necessitate that the person you're playing with feels bad. Which essentially is what a lot of sport is. It's winning and it feels better because the other person feels bad. So I get that. But if they want this game to return on their investment, to make money, to have more people play in the game, to get more people just into the world of Street Fighter, James's idea, casual modes, is just so genius that I can't understand why no one came up with it before. Essentially that is one of the main problems I have with Street Fighter. I really enjoy it because I've been playing it for a long time, but I find it very, very difficult to find, you know, friends in real life who actually want to play it with me because we're not at exactly the same skill level. Which is why online is like a really important feature of all these games now, because there are so many games that if we don't have online mode, it's almost impossible that you're going to find someone who lives near you and is exactly the same level that you are at a fighting game. But with an online mode, you can find people who are pretty much exactly the same rank, a little higher or a little lower, but at least it's going to be fun and, you know, it's going to be a close match at the end. It could have gone either way, but not because it's random, but because you're the same skill level. But whether it's online or whether it's in real life, 
This thing with someone has to experience loss so that I can feel good doesn't have to be the only way that we play fighting games. We could use these characters who have voices, they have faces, they have style, they have backstories, they have actions, they have execution, they have ways to be played. It's such a rich world that they've created that why does someone have to feel bad so that others can enjoy the game? It sounds like this casual mode thing could be the secret. But I'm interested to know what you think. Do you agree with James Chen that adding casual modes to these games will actually help more people have fun in the game? Or do you think it will actually kind of ruin the game and it's just gonna be bloated with all sorts of stuff that we don't need and they're taking development time away from the actual main game? If there were any way that I can enjoy and share the world of fighting games with friends who don't actually spend as much time playing them, that would make me intensely happy. But apart from that, I am so happy now that I've got these classic Street Fighter games, and now we've also got Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle here on the Switch. This is, this. I just love sitting on the train, practicing and training, so that when I get home, I can play online. Now there is the slight issue that online is still kind of broken for Street Fighter, uh, but that's probably because I'm living in Japan, and I don't think they had that really in mind. Street Fighter 30th Anniversary has only been out for a few days, so let's just let them deal with the feedback, and let's see if they make changes so that online is, is usable. I would love to have fun in Street Fighter with people who aren't obsessed with Street Fighter. And I think casual modes is a genius idea. So shouts out to you, James Chen. I'm gonna put the link to your video in the description. Everyone, I highly recommend that you go and watch it. It's a, it's a long video, it's unedited, it's called Uncensored, so he just talks and he doesn't edit it. And I think that's the point. The point is that he doesn't edit anything out. But the main message is a powerful one and I highly recommend it. So anyway, don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video. Cheers. I play a bit of Street Fighter now. Oh, turn this off.